So moving on to 3.0, superintendent's report. Superintendent Kingsley will now make remarks to the Board of Education and to the community. Welcome. Thank you, President Draper and uh, members of the board, staff and members of our community, good evening. Really excited about uh, all of the things that we have planned for public discussion tonight. I wanna start my address by talking a little bit about things that have been happening around the district over the first couple of days, or if not uh, first week or so of school. Um, and I wanna re reassure you in the community that every single day, our district tells a story of hope and optimism. And I think the more and more that we can be intentional about just looking for what that story shares, the more we can celebrate the incredible successes that are happening in our classrooms, across our various departments, and across this incredible school district. Uh, I wanna introduce um, our communications team to launch a very short video around what that might have actually looked like over the first couple of days of school. Matt, thank you. Lots of smiles there, folks, lots of smiles. I'm so proud of all of the things that our parents, our principals, school leaders, our classified staff, and our teachers have done to put smiles on all of our children's and young adults' faces to make sure that we're starting off the school year with joy. Uh, we recognize it's hard right now, whether you're, uh, wherever you are, you know, we're constantly having these conversations around difficult things to move us forward, and sometimes that we can be centered on migrating whether we want to be the cynic or we want to find hopeful and you know hopeful optimism in the things that we're grappling with and I think it's normal to be kind of shifting between that but all of the intentional efforts that our staff and families have done in partnership with each other to celebrate a joyful start of the school year I couldn't be more proud to celebrate them I've had an opportunity in addition to what you saw here over the last couple of days to go to several schools I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a few of them uh, on Friday, it was a little wet at the end of the day at Bacon Elementary School, but they had their ribbon cutting at their brand new outdoor classroom. Uh, and it was so great to see how well attended that was. And I wanna thank the school community for uh, persevering uh, during the rain, but the, the, the grounds crew of our district in partnership with both the PTO and other community resources to make that happen. It is so pristine. There is not a blade of grass that is out of place. Um, but I had for the first time the pleasure and the luxury of meeting uh, the person that that school is named after, Bob Bacon. Uh, and it was so profound for me to get a chance to know about him, his story, both as an educator, as a former board member. I also learned that he is a former uh, Colorado Congress person, both in the Senate and in the House. But I think his greatest point of privilege and pride was that he was the former teacher of board member Carolyn Reed. And he shared that he was, uh, you were a great student, so I wanna make sure the community, you did all of your homework, you raised hands when you wanted to participate in classes, but, but he sends his love and he just really appreciated having an opportunity. Not, it, it was never about him and the school being named after him, it was about his legacy of making sure that the work in serving students in this community continued to pay it forward. So I just thought that was really awesome. Uh, just uh, yesterday, had an opportunity to visit three incredible elementary schools, and I want to be mindful, these, all three of these elementary schools at one point or another last year was named as potentially uh, part of a consolidation plan or a closure plan. And I was so proud to both walk into McGraw Elementary School, and I will say McGraw Elementary School is the highest performing academic school on the west side of town in this district. I'm so proud of the leadership of Amy Smith and her leadership team getting a chance to sit down uh, with Principal Smith and learn a little bit about her leadership story. You may or may not know that she was the principal of Moore Elementary School, a school that last closed in this community. And she, as the proud principal of McGraw, this is the first time her kindergarten class is two tracks, not three. 
And so that concern and consternation around what that means, but she was really, really uh, incredible to get a chance to know a little bit better. I've known her for three years, but I've got a chance to learn a little bit more about her leadership story of moving and migrating from a core knowledge school to an IB school and understanding the, both the importance of content, but service and the IB philosophy. And I think merging those two things together and the teachers and the community's buy-in uh, buy is what makes that school uh, a real academic success and high-performing school. Had an opportunity to go to Harris Bilingual Elementary School. Uh, Noah Huerta Kelly, the principal there, this is her last year before she retires after an incredible career. Um, and she recognized and told the story that last year made their school community stronger. It also in some ways gave them permission to tell their story more broadly and more assertively in the community around how amazing they are. I had a chance to meet many of their interventionists, their English language development teachers, uh, it was incredible to watch some of their uh, elective teachers uh, who were both modeling different incredible practices for students, but it was just an incredible spirit of joy and inspiration. And if you have over between now and next Saturday, I'd really like to invite the community to give a special just thought in their heart to Mr. Fuentes, their fourth grade teacher. He's a teacher that every time he speaks, every student at some level in the class leans a little bit more forward in their classroom. Uh, but Mr. Fuentes is the proud graduate of not just Colorado State University, but also the University of Texas. And they're playing football together this weekend. And he's really conflicted about wearing burnt orange and green and gold at the same time. But he is just such an amazing teacher, and it was great to get a chance to see him in action. Uh, and then I finished my day at Lopez Elementary School. Um, not only is that a new, uh, newly awarded legacy school in terms of the Leader in Me program, but I think the Leader in Me program is probably one of the highest, most qualified social emotional learning programs that you can find in public education today. There is not a student that you will walk by at Lopez Elementary School that won't take a moment to smile at you and greet you and welcome you to their school. In fact, they actually have leadership roles when you walk into the classroom that there's a student or two that's designated to welcome you and tell you about what they're learning, where they're headed in their learning, uh, which is just a really incredible way of work. And I want to give a special shout out to another fourth grade teacher, Miss Johnson. I saw her in action, the artistry of Miss Johnson as she was reading a book in a read aloud that was a part of our EL education curriculum uh, called Pinduli. Uh, it's a, this book and story about a spotted hyena and how they're experiencing across the uh, African savanna these unkind words being told to them by zebras, lions, and dogs. And how the hyena had to look inwards around how not lose their identity and recognize the actual survival of the hyena was based upon being very proud of who they are and what they do, but also taking every moment to breathe light and harmony into their community. As you think about our agenda tonight, togetherness and harmony is a real part of the conversation. We're going to talk about our ecosystem of the various committees that we have across this district, not just to say, hey, we've figured it out, but to make sure that you as a board and the community recognize this is the current state. We may have as a team a uh, desire to change that as a future state based upon feedback and curiosities. I know many of you as members of the board have already talked about that, but I just want to say huge thanks for the overwhelming amount of interest that we have for members of our community to ele their, elevate their voices provide us a level of advisement around our way of work moving forward. It's just really important that we continue to figure out creative ways to work together. So really excited about that conversation. At those types of practices, as we continue to refine them and iterate them, and I'll close on this, is really what's dependent upon this district having a very sustainable, healthy, high-performing future. You're gonna to hear tonight about our strategic plan and make no mistakes about it, the priorities of making sure that all of our students graduate but, and have options post-graduation, that is a part of the work that we're not pivoting from, but it's bigger than that. We want to make sure that our students not only graduate, but they have the skills to get a job in our backyard. And they have a chance to earn a living wage and have an opportunity because they're a proud graduate of this school system to achieve and attain economic mobility to pursue a pathway forward. That requires us to innovate and really think about what are the classrooms of tomorrow, not just the ones that we have today. And I'm really, really proud that this Board of Education tonight is going to grapple and recognizing that the needs that we have, the vision that we have for the future of the system, in many instances, we do not have a clearly defined funding source to achieve them, which requires us to think really differently about curriculum, 
our career and technical education programs? How do we ensure that we're retaining the most talented and highly qualified workforce? How do we make sure that we continue to tend to the various infrastructure needs that when you look at whether it's our maintenance, our brick and mortar, everything in our buildings from cooling systems, HVAC systems, boiler systems, roof replacement programs, none of those things which are essential to move our work forward, do we have a recurring annual funding source to achieve and the overall estimate of the cost today in today's dollars is about $700 million just in maintenance. And that does not include our irrigation systems, everything outside our buildings that are under or on top of our asphalt, like our playgrounds. So this is a work that's in progress in just the beginning. As we start at the school year, we talked a little bit about having 32 of our 49 schools not having proper air conditioning. If this board and this community wants to entertain the idea of putting air conditioning in every single one of our facilities, we're going to need to think creative around how to achieve a funding solution that's going to equate to about 250 to almost $300 million to achieve that goal. I'm really proud that you're having a conversation tonight. I also know that we're looking for figuring out different ways to be more sustainable and energy efficient, whether that's solar, whether that's looking at how we take some of our systems or our computer systems and technology systems to be more efficient, those dollars add up too. Uh, and we want to make sure that we continue to think about all of these in their entirety. And I want to invite the community and the district that if you want to know what this means for your individual school, please go to our district website today, psdschools.org, click on the community link, and you will see a hyperlink that is very specific for a proposed mill levy override for this year in 2024 and you can click on a link that will let you know each of the individual projects that we have aspirations of achieving and finishing and completing or across this entire district so not only across the district but school specific information is there and i just want to say thank you to this governance team i want to thank you for the community who has engaged with us thoughtfully asked really hard but necessary questions to move us as a system forward and i'm looking forward to having uh those types of conversations in partnership with you tonight. So thanks again for allowing me the opportunity to address the community.